Hey Lunacy Fighters, this is Shannon and I'm coming to you today with everyone's only black friend, Tyler Preston. Hello everybody. So how are you doing, sir? I am really tired right now, but I'm just feeling fine just for you. Oh shit, I always forget to mute the fucking YouTube. Okay, we're good. It always happens for me too, don't worry about that. Alright, and at least I, I know I'm not a total failure. <laughs> or at yeah. least I I may be a total failure, but other people are too, so it's not as bad, I guess. Right, like I I guess everybody fails the first time around for Google Hangouts, you know? Yeah. Well, you'd think I'd be a professional at it at this point. <laughs> it's kind of like what I do. But... Right, like every single time I get like a Google Hangout done, like I get some sort of problem. Like somebody just joined the group and then like it kind of does not work at all and then like there are some people I cannot hear me, so it's all good. Oh, and then you get the weird ones where, like, there's doubles and triples of people for no reason. Right. Oh, it's bad. So, um, all right, let's actually talk about something relevant. Uh, so how did you decide to start doing what you do and making the videos and yeah. whatnot? Well, prior to talking about the SJWs. I talked a lot about movies in my channel, at least back in 2011. I had usually talked about a lot of stuff, like a lot of horror movies and a lot of tokusatsu and Godzilla on my channel. And it wasn't until 2015 when I started to want to talk about feminism and social justice and also Islam because I noticed that a lot of the stuff that the feminists are doing online didn't seem like it matched, you know, the definition of feminism because for the longest period of time, I thought that the feminist movement was about, you know, empowering women to, mean, you know, be good and stuff like actually, you know, make them strong. And then I noticed that a lot of the feminists didn't really match what I thought what a feminist was and I wanted to talk about it. The first kind of case when I started to notice about it was actually in 2014 with the Ban Bossy campaign where they say that you cannot talk to, like you cannot call a woman bossy or something like that. And I was really surprised about that. Like, okay, you know, guys can also be called bossy too. So why are you complaining about this? And I see these other protesters at these uh, MRA meetings and they started saying that you are evil, you're cis white male scum and stuff. So I started to notice that the feminist movement had drastically, you know, became more radical as I guess it went on. And I wanted to talk about it on my channel and I started to talk about it since then. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you did. Otherwise I probably would have never known who you were or anything like that. And I really, I dig your channel. I actually, when I found it, and I, I find I do this with a lot of YouTubers. When I find their channel, I just sit and I binge for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, it's safe to say that the the next week after I found your channel, uh, your theme song was stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, everybody tells me that. Like Everybody tells me when they watch my channel for the first time, this theme song actually sticks in their head. It's a hell of an earworm. It really is. Um, <laughs> you want to know the, like the, the origins of the theme song? Yeah, I would love to know the origins of the theme song. Okay, so what happened was um, back in 2014, I was just talking to a group of friends on Skype. And they say, hey, is everybody's friend Tyler? I'm like, yeah, I'm your only black friend. And then we started to come up with the lyrics of the song, and the song got composed overnight. And ever since the guy composed the song for me, I started to use it like on my videos when i first used it for the first time ever on my channel it was not as popular as it was later in 2015 when i started to reuse it in 2015 it started to gain a lot of popularity yeah it's awesome i bet you didn't ha know you had something you know of a total yeah like i did not know like people would actually like it though when i first you know thought of the song like i didn't think people would like it yeah so who's singing it it was like one of my friends named Dylan. Okay. Um, that's like one, like there's a lot of different variations of the song now. Like there are so many people nowadays, I guess, who are musicians who want to compose like remixes to my song. So sometimes I use the original song and then other times I use remixes from other people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm really lucky. Um, I had, uh, he, he's like 8-bit metal music is what he 
is known as on YouTube, and it's a freaking crime because he doesn't put out any music ever, and it's really frustrating. But uh, he contacted me and was like, "Hey, uh, you know, do you want some music for your channel?" So he made me a piece, and uh, so that's my outro music. And I just about a, you know, about a month or two ago learned how to audio mix, so I don't blow people's eardrums out at the end of every video now. Right. Like the thing, the thing about editing is that it's actually much more, you could say, complicated than shooting something because editing is all about, you know, editing in clips and getting the audio levels correct and mm -hmm. color correction. Like editing is perhaps the most complicated process of filmmaking. It really is. And actually, that's why, because people ask me, you know, oh, well, why, why did you go on camera and not, you know, uh, be anonymous? Why did you put yourself out there? And it's like, because it's easy to just sit down in front of a camera and talk versus having to, you know, record audio and put it with images and, you know, cut it together and all of that. That's difficult. <laughs> Going right, on camera like is easy. For recording the audio for a microphone is actually even trickier because you have to make sure that it has the right audio level. Otherwise it sounds really bad or scratchy. So it's much more easier to film something that has a built-in microphone and also better, you could say, video quality than something that's half a still image. Not yeah. to say that people who use still images are bad or nothing, but it's like, for me at least, it's much more easier to use a camera. Yeah, I agree. And so, you know, I'm just now starting to learn how to do any sort of video editing, although people give me shit because uh, I, I use Movie Maker. <laughs> Oh, you do? Yeah, that's all I have. And, you know, I, I don't know my ass from a hole in the ground when it comes to video editing. So I'm just well, kind of learning me, by like, doing. For, yeah, like for video, video editing for me is actually natural because I actually study videography. And so this kind of stuff is like a repeat of what I already know from the past. Like when I was younger, I used to go to film school and help create short films from my own film camp. And then I also learn a lot about like videography when I'm in college. And so a lot of the stuff that I'm doing on YouTube is actually practicing for stuff like for videography. So it's actually something that I already am familiar with. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Hello? Uh-oh. I think we lost her. I'm just going to look in the chat for one minute then until she actually uh, come back. Yeah, she's actually... Okay, great. Okay, you're back? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Like for a second, like you were gone there. <laughs> yeah, my uh, husband sat on my cord and ripped it out. Oh no. Yeah, so we're good. We're good. But a lot okay. of the video editing stuff, like it comes from experience from my own major, and so it's much easier. I guess you can, much more natural for me to actually edit stuff compared to I guess somebody who had to learn it from ground up. Oh yeah, no. What I was saying is, uh, in my high school, you know, we had a. Uh, what they called the media program. And, uh, you know, it, it was uh, basically during high school, you could take college courses on, uh, you know, video editing and, you know, making visual media pretty much or digital media, you, you know what I mean? And right. uh, videography and stuff like that. And everyone was like, oh, Shannon, you should take that. I'm like, why would I ever need that? You know? <laughs> If, like, if I could physically kick myself, I would at this point. <laughs> right. Like, um, nowadays, the videography courses, they actually have really high-tech computers for students to edit their videos on. Like, for the videography classes that I took, basically, they use IMAX to edit their videos on using Final Cut Pro, actually. Yeah. And it's actually... Um, it's not that complicated using Final Cut Pro. Like, I guess compared to now, like in the past, like people actually had to edit on film instead of, you know, using computers. So it's actually, we are kind of more fortunate to have that kind of stuff now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, um, okay, I have to ask, cause I'm curious, how old are you? I'm 23. Oh, you're a 
baby. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Aw. No, I'm I'm only 26, so you're not that far behind me. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know. You 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 know what? You 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 uh people with more melanin than me, you know. <laughs> It's hard to tell because you guys don't age. Yeah, like I, I, like all the black people I've seen that have been old have never really aged at all, ever. Well, well, what it seems like is like it's like no aging, no aging, no aging, no aging. All of a sudden, really fucking old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like it's so strange. Like people like uh, like Samuel L. Jackson. He never. He does not look old at all. No, he doesn't. Neither does like Denzel. At oh, all. Yeah, like he still like, looks young. Yeah, like I saw a movie on the other night. Uh, like, you know, my, my mother in law just had the TV on her or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, Denzel Washington's in this. And I figured, you know, it's an older movie or anything. But no, the chick, like, sitting across from him pulls out a smartphone. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking about movies, like, uh, I noticed that you like Power Rangers. Like, do you like other kind of Japanese shows or movies? Um, yeah, okay, so the Power Rangers thing, uh, it's more my husband's thing and my son's together. I grew up watching Power Rangers, and I loved it growing up and everything. But, um, uh, I, I mean, the Sentai is better. <laughs> I will say that. Not hentai, Sentai. Um, <laughs> I always have to specify that. Um but the Sentai is better because, you know, it it can be bloody, people die. Like, okay, spoiler alert, whatever. But um, so what they made our season one from was a Sentai called uh, Zhu Ranger. Yep. And uh, so the Green Ranger over here, you know, it's like, oh, he's losing his powers, whatever. You know, Tommy's losing his powers, da 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 well, over there, the Green Ranger was uh, actually the estranged brother of the Red Ranger, and they were ancient. Uh, they were like ancient princes or whatever with dinosaur powers that came from that era with dinosaurs, and then were put into stasis or whatever. But uh, the Green Ranger was evil, and then he turns good, whatever. And so you know, they're they're all teamed up. Well, it turns out while they were in stasis. Um, there was a rock slide, and uh, the Green Ranger, whose name was Burai, uh, had pretty much died in the stasis. And so his life force was tied to this candle, which over here, Tommy's powers were, you know, connected to a candle. And once the candle runs out, you know, he loses his powers. Well, in the Sentai, when the candle runs out, Burai dies. And they let all these Japanese kids vote if Burai would live or die. And the kids overwhelmingly voted for him to live. And so the producers of the show killed him anyway to teach kids the lesson that sometimes heroes just die. That is brutal as fuck. <laughs> it's not only that, but also in, uh, in Zoo Ranger, like there was the Yellow Ranger, like in the American version, it's like a Asian girl. However, in a Japanese one is like uh, a guy in that suit. Named, named boy, by the way. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I I like I get at, I'm I'm more about the Sentai. I've seen some good ones. Um, Have you seen I, shows like uh, Johnny Sacco and his flying robot or like uh, Ultraman? No. Uh. -uh. Oh man, you're missing out. And um, for Johnny Sacco and this flying robot, that was actually created in the 1960s, and it had like a kid with a giant robot that looked like some sort of Egyptian kind of thing. I forgot what it's called, but basically, it's like a kid with a giant robot fighting against giant monsters. And Ultraman, do, do I really do I really need to describe like Ultraman? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I know. Okay. So I just haven't seen it. Okay. But basically, like it was, it was, it was also created in the '60s too by uh, by a company named Subaraya Production. Like Subaraya was actually the uh, the special effects director of the Godzilla franchise. Okay. So, so basically, he formed his own company called Subaraya Productions, and he made shows like Ultraman for uh, Japanese TVs in the '60s and '70s. That's really nifty. 
Yeah, it was also like another show that's pretty good. Um, I, I'm trying to think about other Japanese shows, but there's definitely like the Power Rangers, there's Ultraman, and the Super Sentai. Like basically a lot of the, the Japanese shows and movies I'm pretty fond of. So you're an otaku? Um, I wouldn't say I'm not, I'm not that hardcore. Like basically I just... Uh, I know, I, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> I know, but it's like there are certain anime and there are certain Japanese monster movies that I do enjoy watching. Like yeah. for, the, for the for the anime stuff, like um, I enjoy watching Attack on Titan. I enjoy watching Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Of course, um, of course, you gotta love Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Are you watching Super? Um, I haven't watched it yet. I mean, I saw some episodes, but some of it seemed like a repeat of like Battle of Gods and Resurrection. It, F. it is. They they went through like Battle of Gods and Resurrection F and everything, but uh, they basically they changed some of it. They fleshed it out more. Um, so it, it I don't know. It's good, but now that they've gotten out of that whole thing and like you know started going beyond it. It's really difficult for me to not watch, because uh, I I'm trying so hard to wait for the dub, because you know I I see these characters and I expect to hear you know Sean Chamel or Chris Sabat or whatever, you know? <laughs> right? Like those are those characters. That's their voices. I can't I can't imagine it any other way, and. So, yeah, when I try to watch the Japanese with the subtitles, it's like, okay, that's that's nice and all, but no, you, you sound weird. And like, for me, like, uh, for the case of watching, like, the Japanese movies or, like, the anime, like, it kind of depends. Like, there are some dubs that I think that are superior to the Japanese one, and there are some Japanese dubs that are superior to the English one. Like for, like, for example, like, uh, for the case of Death Note, like, the dub, I think, is actually probably good, if not better, than the original one. And the same thing applies to, like, uh, I have the Dragon Ball Z. I've been trying to find uh, the dub of Death Note, and I've been having so much trouble finding it. So. Uh, I think it's probably might be on some sort of streaming site like Crunchyroll or something. I looked on Crunchyroll. I couldn't find it there, but I don't know. Maybe they added it, but... Um, I, I want to watch Death Note. I haven't watched Attack on Titan yet. Oh um, man, you're missing so much. On well, Attack on Titan. <laughs> I, I try. I try to watch. I try to wait for things to be done, so I can just binge all the way through. You know. I think the first season for Attack on Titan is done. So we well, could. No, I'm saying I wait for a show to be done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, have you watched Gans? I never heard of that one. Oh my God! You gotta watch Gans. Although I recommend, if you can, because um, what happened was Gans was a manga first, as so many are, um, and they were, uh, you know, basing the anime off the manga. Well, then they caught up to the manga, and so they had to like it, it's the show is split into four sagas. Okay. And uh, the fourth saga was written specifically for the anime. And oh. it's not as good, and it doesn't tie it up well enough. Um, so the first is, is that saga is, like is that spelled uh, G G A N T Z or something? Yeah, G A N T Z, okay. and uh, it's 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 really good. And they made uh, two live action movies. I think so I heard that, of the movies. Huh? I think I heard of the movies actually, yeah, but not the, the show. The live action movies um, are good. I would say the anime, at least for the three uh, first sagas, are, is better. But okay. if you want to continue the story the correct way, the way it was supposed to go, um, then you know I would recommend watching the live action movies after watching the show. Have you seen any sort of Japanese samurai movies? I have, yes. Like, uh, what's, which ones? I have no idea. <laughs> it's just been kind of that, that whole, like, I've had friends who've been really into samurai movies, and they're like, oh, you got to watch this. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this is called, but it's cool. <laughs> There's this one particular movie series that was really good. It's called The, uh, the Lone Wolf and the Cub. Over uh -huh. here, it's actually called, like, what's, what's the, the U.S. name here? Um, samurai Showdown, I think that's what's, what's it called there. Here. Okay. 
but basically is like about like the samurai and his kid fighting off a lot of baddies and it's a really good series actually particularly the japanese version but the american version is called samurai showdown okay and there's right. also this movie that's created by kurosawa is like a seven samurai okay i'll have to check that out um and there's also like another one by Kurosawa is like uh, called Yojimbo. Basically, that movie was actually inspired the uh, the Man with No Name trilogy. Oh, okay. I I think I know what you're talking about then because I've heard about that and how exactly what you said it inspired that trilogy. Um, okay, so so we don't you know seem like too much of weeaboos here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Okay, to to get into what, you know, our area of, um, you know, what we do is, uh, let's talk about something serious here for a minute. Um, so, you uh, kind of have a niche of responding to social justice and feminism, as well as racist black people. <laughs> race <laughs> <laughs> and i i feel like i do the same thing you know i take up arms for the you know retarded cripples you know <laughs> um, oh sorry was that ableist oh yeah um, very ableist <laughs> good but you know it, it, you know do you find that you know basically being you know being black right you kind of have more of a responsibility to, to you know stand up to people like Black Lives Matter and basically just racist asshole black people. Well, I don't really think about it that way. Like, I always been against racists, like ever since, I don't know, like since I was a kid, like basically I was always thought like racists are just scum. And so I, I typically, when I in the past, I didn't really see that many black racists. But as soon as I got an odor, I realized that there's actually more black racists than I realized. And then I got more aware about these groups like Black Lives Matter, like the new Panther Party, these kind of groups that actually go out their way to just hate white people. And so when I make these videos against these black racists, I'm not doing it because they're black, but because they're racist. So that's why right. I usually do these videos against them. And I understand that. I, I'm not meaning to insinuate like, oh, you're just go after black people or anything like that. Hmm. But I, I'm just saying, you know, I was curious because I kind of feel like it wasn't intentional, but I have gotten to the point where I, I've made so many videos about disability and ableism and, you know, all that stupid shit. Right. You know? And it just kind of happened organically. But now people look to me when, you know, the next stupid cripple hashtag pops up. You know? <laughs> right. Like, it seems as though, like, like, groups like Black Lives Matter, they are getting actually to political support by the politicians in office. And it's terrible. And so it actually poses as a stread. And so that's why it seems as though I'm just keep on attacking them because they actually have power by people. Yeah, did you see uh when when um that that shit basically the you know the racist uh the the racist black people and the cripples intersected? No, I didn't. Yeah, I had to make a video about it, of course. Um <laughs> it, it they they started a hashtag disability to white. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Basically, going off about you know the white cripples oppressing the black cripples. I'm like, really? <laughs> like the thing is with Black Lives Matter. Like, I never really supported them, but like when they first came out, I think around like 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. like there was actually legit concern in regards to police brutality. Hell, there still is legit concern. Oh yeah, definitely. In regards to police brutality, so. They actually had a good reason to be started. So when they started to de do these kind of militant actions and actually started saying these anti-cop red, red, these racist stuff, like I started to realize that they actually are going down the same exact path as feminism. And it's no surprise considering that the founders of Black Lives Matter are in fact feminists. Yeah. And it's just really strange, like, and as far as the whole entire shooting in Dallas is concerned, like people are saying that it's not motivated by Black Lives Matter. 
I'm here to tell you that it actually is, and I'm going to tell you why I think this way. The reason why I think this way is because, like, of course, the chance that they want for dead cops. Also, the guy who was actually the shooter, he actually liked many Black Lives Matter Facebook pages. He was also part of the new Black Panthers Party, which happens to be really racist against white people. And also the fact that the ideological roots of Black Lives Matter comes directly from Asada Shikar. Like one of the founders of Black Lives Matter said that Asada Shikar was actually the main inspiration behind Black Lives Matter. And also they do this kind of Asada Shikar chant every single time they protest. Like the Asada Shikar chant is basically this. What, say, um, we, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. That's the Asada Shikar chant. So basically, a lot of the stuff that they do is based entirely off of anti-cop rhetoric, which led to the shooters to do what he did against those cops. Right, right. And didn't didn't the uh, shooter, you know, before they brought in the Roomba of death, which, by the way, Roombas of death, I'm so excited that it's a thing now. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't really know. Like, it's kind of scary to think that, like, I mean, it, it yeah, like, like it's kind of like, you know, the guy was actually had a military background. Mm -hmm. So I guess it kind of makes sense. But what if the government used that against innocent people, though? Like, that's it, it is. <laughs> like, it, it's, a, it's a slippery slope, and I get it. But I feel like, you know, at that point, after he had, you know, killed and shot so many cops, as well as, you know, some civilians and everything, it's kind of. Like, you know, did they really want to risk anyone else going in after him? You know, right. <laughs> ops? Did, I bet they didn't even want to risk their canine units at that point, you know? Uh, so I think they made the best decision at the time. Do I think it should be used all the time? Of course not. I think they just kind of went, they improvised with what they could. Right. Like, I think this it should be used for, like, people like him who had a military background, but not, like, everyday Joes like us. <laughs> right, right. I don't know, man. If I go on a shooting spree, I'm hell on wheels, <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> uh, can, do, you, do you think you can actually hold a gun, like, to use, like, with a sniper rifle or something? Me? Yeah, I go shooting. You do? Yeah. Like what kind of guns do you use? Um, I can I can use I can only shoot a twenty two because I'm not strong enough to pull the trigger on anything else. But yeah, I can go shooting with a twenty two, and I'm actually a pretty good shot. So. Oh God. Um. <laughs> um. I know, I think the most the weapon I used before when I was like younger when I was in Boy Scout was actually a BB gun, but that's pretty much it. I never use a gun at all ever in my life. Yeah. Like ever. Like I cannot, you know, like I I could use guns like in video games, but like I'm not sure if I could actually use a real gun. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Going shooting is a lot of fun to me and I I like the fact that I know I can, you know, defend myself if I need to, but honestly, uh what I want most is a taser. Hmm. Uh because I have actually tased two people. Uh, oh. they, they they requested it. It was completely okay. Uh, <laughs> no, they they wanted to try getting tased, and so you know, of course, I volunteered. Um, it was a friend of mine's taser who was on site with us to make sure no one got hurt. He's he's a, a paramedic. Okay. So, yeah, okay. and we got all of their consent and everything on film beforehand and the shooting of the tasers but um yeah so i've shot two people with the taser and i am actually good with the taser and i love <laughs> the idea of you know not hurting people i mean it would hurt but you know i can get someone on the ground and you know every five seconds i can shock them again keep them on the ground <laughs> until, you know until cops or whoever can get there yeah speaking about taser like um i think more cops would probably use other weapons besides a gun. Like, I know that the gun should be, like, a last resort, but if they could use more stuff like tasers, like stun guns, that would also be nice, too. Yeah, I agree, but uh, have you ever seen the video of the guy who's, like, on PCP, and they tase him, and he just laughs? Uh, and No, I never. Yeah, that, that was terrifying. 
Oh goodness! I can. I, I I can't remember if he laughed or he just pointed at the cop and said, "I'm gonna get you, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but yeah, no, uh, I I I'm trying to figure out where I have those videos because I know they're on YouTube. Okay. Not just not my YouTube, but yeah, they they're out there. I think they're on my husband's YouTube. Huh. So <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I, when you first, what was the first time you fired a gun? Um, when I was twenty-two. Wow. Um. Yeah. Like, were you actually nervous when you first fired a gun? Yeah, yeah, I was. But I mean, I was in a controlled environment. I was, you know, at the range, uh, with my friends, and you know, it was it was completely controlled. I knew. I knew, you know, basic gun protocols and, you know, the the trigger finger, you know, how to actually hold it and not, you know, you know, oh. good trigger etiquette, whatever. Oh, was it like a pistol or something? No, yeah, it was a twenty two rifle. Oh. Uh and there's there's no kickback on that thing. Like okay. there really isn't. And so, you know, you you go and you know, I had my head, my earmuff things on, and my ear protection and everything. So really, it was it was, it was exhilarating. It wasn't <laughs> scary. You Talk know? about jumping the gun, you know. Eh, and well, twenty twos <laughs> are are little, you know, bitch pistols. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> like they they're they're just like one step up from a BB gun, honestly. Um, but. It, I don't know. I I love I love the idea of a twenty two because you know, uh, with a lot of guns, you shoot someone and the bullet just goes right through, right? Mm -hmm. But with the twenty two, the velocity is low enough that it enters the body and just bounces around in there. Oh, it doesn't go out the other side. So twenty two can do more damage. Goodness. Yeah. So I like the idea of that in case I have to really defend myself you know it but like i said i would rather have a taser to defend myself i would only want to you know pull out a firearm if i intended for that person to never get back up you know i'm kind of curious have you ever debated a feminist uh i mean not on youtube or anything but yes yeah in my <laughs> life yeah Really, like, were they nice or just mean or whatever? Oh my God, she was a total cunt. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was actually my friends. Uh, the, well, I mean, I've talked to a lot of feminists and stuff like that, and you know, they're usually kind of jerky. But uh, <laughs> this one was like the epitome of like, okay, have you ever seen the uh, the meme of the you know fat feminist on the uh, yeah. <laughs> on the broom and it says you know beep beep I'm off to fight the patriarchy right that was this woman um, she I'm convinced this woman this whole time was a lesbian she claims just now she's a lesbian um, but she uh, she basically used two men one of whom was one of my best friends to get pregnant mm -hmm. and then you know screw the guys over just looking for child support and uh i had to help the guy fight to even be able to see his son wow. that's all he wants in the world is to see his kid but so this bitch um her argumentative style was to ask me my opinion on something i would give her my opinion civilly and she would just go false that's <laughs> false and i'm like it's an opinion it can't be false no that's false i'm like oh my god you are fucking nuts <laughs> wow. uh, it's kind of strange like um i actually don't really know any feminists in real life um the only I, feminists i actually talk to are the ones on my channel like uh i spoke to a person by the name of Shira. She's actually a really nice person if you have not checked her out yet. Mm -hmm. And I also even spoke and debated to the Skeptic Feminist channel <laughs> on my channel. See, my, my whole thing is, you know, I feel like that chick was really upset that she couldn't block me in person, you know? Right. <laughs> so she just, false! I'm like, what are you going to do? Hit me? Hit a cripple. <laughs> do it, bitch. 
<laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm higher on the progressive stack than her because she's just fat. I'm in a wheelchair, so <laughs> I think I win. You know, as far as the uh, Russian Olympics. Oh, what about me? Like I'm probably higher than you, right? Oh, you are. You are definitely. But I'm saying between you know me and fatty <laughs> bitch tits, you know, it, yeah, I would win. <laughs> Like when were you kind of introduced to the feminist movement and started being against it? Um, I always knew. Okay, well, I can I can say I probably probably called myself a feminist in high school or maybe middle school uh, because it was really pushed in uh, in the, at least the public schools I was going to. Um, you know, oh, feminism is equality and women are you know, oppressed and da, da 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 So, you know, I, I didn't understand, obviously, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually, uh, I dropped out of high school when I was 16 years old. And I feel like, honestly, like it's a mixed blessing because uh, the indoctrination didn't get finished, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I started uh, running... A, uh, a political page on Facebook back in 2012. And yes, it was very conservative. And no, I'm not as conservative these days, but it's too late to switch liberal lunacy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I started out pretty hardcore conservative. And, uh, you know, I would, I would look at other pages and see what they were up to. And I saw... Um, a friend of mine who ran another page shared something from a page called uh, Anti-Feminazi. And so I started going through the page. I'm like, what? They hate women or something? What the fuck? <laughs> and so I started going through it and I was like, wait, what? What? Oh my God. You know, seeing things about, you know, men not being able to see their children and, you know, uh, false rape allegations and stuff like that. And, you know, I really started thinking about it and thinking back on things. And, you know, like, I'll admit, and I, I feel like such a hypocrite for this, but I'm one of the few people that the horrible upside-down laws worked out for. You know, like, um, I don't know if you know any of my past, uh, but I was with a guy... Uh, for two years, whose favorite hobbies were drugs and beating the shit out of me. Wow. Oh, I'm fine now. Uh, but, you know, so I, I got pregnant by the guy, and, you know, I, I had to make an escape plan and get me and my child out of there when he decided to leave marks on my son's face when he was five months old, mm -hmm. I think. So, you know... I, I feel like a hypocrite, though, because I had to get him away, you know? Right. And, but, you know, I started really thinking about how easy that was for me to be able to do. And it's like, well, huh, you know, what about those guys out there who aren't, you know, pieces of shit like that, you know, that want to see their kids? Really? Do and, you consider yourself like, uh, I guess, an MRA I am an MRA, yeah. Oh, okay. uh, not not an activist because there's not really much I can do, but I'm an <laughs> advocate. Um, I I try to help people, like you know, like I just said, my friend uh, who wasn't able to see his child, I was there to help him, and you know, try to help him get resources and stuff like that. So I don't know if that counts as activism, but I I think it is, you know, advocating at least. Yeah, it's really interesting because. The same exact time I figured out about the feminist movement, I also realized that there was also a men's rights movement. I'm like, wait, there's actually a men's rights movement? Yep. Uh, I, can, <laughs> I can actually safely say I was red-pilled by Dr. Randomer Cam. Of course. <laughs> yeah, as everyone was. Uh, no, I, I, I had no idea men's rights was a thing. Um, I, I knew anti-feminism was a thing. And I was like, yes, I'm on board with this, you know, but I didn't know men's rights was a thing until I basically started going through YouTube and finding channels and this and that. And I found um, internet aristocrat, but well, when he was still internet aristocrat and um, from there I found Sargon and 
through Sargon, I found Random Recam, and that opened up a whole new world to me. Yeah, like when I first got introduced to the MRM, it was actually uh, last year. There was this humongous uh, controversy about the movie called Mad Max. Yep. And there was like a lot of sites that was claiming that the people that are speaking out against it are MRAs. And I started to do my own research about it. And I realized that the people that spoke out against it was not MRAs, but rather like this Roosh V site. Yeah. And then I noticed that a lot of the claims that the M against the MRA are like basically, you know, misconceptions. Like they call like D Dylan Roof an MRA. Well, yeah, or they, like these they other kind of shooters MRAs. So I realized well, yeah, they, that they tell they lies try to, a lot. They try to lump uh, like pickup artists in with MRAs. Right. And it's really funny that they basically try to lump in MRAs, pickup artists, and MGTOW all together. And it's like, that really doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Like, as soon as I realized that the feminists were starting to, you know, tell lies about the MRM, I got really pissed and I started to sympathize more with the MRM. A's than the feminists actually. Yeah. I don't. I don't consider myself an MRA. I just call. I call myself an egalitarian. But I. I kind of sympathize more towards the MRM toward, than the feminists. Yeah. Well, see, like the reason I. I uh, would identify. Oh, I'm identify. Yeah. Um, why I see myself as an MRA is, um, you know, I. I have a seven-year-old son, and. I, I'm terrified of the world he's going to grow up in, you know, right. he, it, I, I'm so scared he's going to go to college and, you know, turn down a girl for a date or something and she's going to say he raped me, you know, and they'll be believed. That's right. Terrifying. Like it's part of like the whole entire law for rape is rape. Like people are just assume like they're rapists because they did not verbally consent during sex. It's just disgusting. Right. And, you know, it, it's just terrifying that he could live in a world where, you know, like a, a friend of mine, um, who is another reason I, I fight for men's rights. Um, he is, you know, one of the toughest fucking people I know. He was in the military, you know, a tough exterior, but very, very kind, kind man. And uh, actually, he was the one with the taser. He was, <laughs> he was a combat medic turned paramedic. Um <laughs> But just as such a sweet, wonderful guy and, you know, been my friend for a very long time and, you know, all of that. And, uh, you know, when I got out of the relationship with my asshole ex, who's, you know, the, the, the you know, abusive fucker, um, you know, I, I hadn't been allowed to talk to that guy for a long time because, you know, my ex took my phone away and wouldn't let me mm -hmm. talk to people. So, you know, I got out of that relationship and I found his phone number and I called it and it was, you know, maybe 930 at night or something. And uh, hi, that guy, T. You're, you're next, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, T, what's up? I'm looking forward for my video for my video. <laughs> I'm, I, uh, he's supposed to come on at some point. He's, he's supposed to make a video for my video. It's for like questions blacks have for SJWs with other black YouTubers. Nice. That's awesome. Um, but no, so I got a hold of this guy's number and I called him at like 930 at night or whatever. And this woman picks up, right? And she's like, you know, what the fuck are you doing calling my husband? I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know he was married and uh, I don't want to fuck him. So can I talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> and she's, yeah. she's like, you do not call this late and hung up on me. I'm like, okay, fuck you, bitch. So I, you know, he, he calls me a few months later and uh, tells me the story of how uh, he got together with this woman and uh, she had a bunch of kids by different men and oh, he, he, you know, wanted to take them on, although, you know, he declined to adopt them like she was pushing for, thank God. <laughs> and uh, he told me he ended up uh, sitting at home watching her kids while she was going out for quote unquote girls' nights, i.e., <laughs> sucking every dick in the you know a hundred mile radius. And uh, when he confronted her about it, she pulled out a hammer and broke his ribs. And uh, he called the police, and he got taken away in handcuffs. 
Wow. Yeah. So, you know, he's a big reason why I, I, I want to try to make a better life out there for men, you know? It sounds like it's the result of the Violence Against Women's Act. Like, it doesn't it make any sense, like, it how... It's how the people, Duluth model. Right. Like, it doesn't make any sense that a person, like a guy, gets abused, but somehow the guy gets arrested himself, even though he have not done anything at all. Yeah, it's the Duluth model. You know, um, it, it's... it's Basically, the way it is now is... Um, you know, if the police are called to a domestic disturbance of any kind, they have to assume by their training that the man is at fault and take him away. Wow. Or at least make him leave. That's just fucked up. <laughs> I know. I know. And there, there, you know, I know people who have, you know, had their girlfriend, you know, scratching their faces and stuff and the cops make them leave. You know, oh, well, you're like, I, I know, I know one case where a woman uh, got a restraining order because she w felt threatened by the way that a man was looking at her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just, just looking at her. The look was intimidating. Is that the steer rape stuff that they talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it, it's terrifying that these people have any leverage in the law. It's crazy. Like, the fact that they actually assume that the guy is guilty until proven innocent goes yeah. against everything what we stand for. We're supposed to assume that a person is actually innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. Supposed to, yes. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, our our species being sexually dimorphic and all of that um gynocentrism is is very easily propagated you know because men have biologically have an instinct to want to protect women and women have figured that out and now they want to exploit it and I'm not saying all women, obviously, because I would say majority of women are like me and actually have a fucking brain. You know, right, like, I, like I see some MGTOWs that say, "Oh, all women are like this." Like, no, no, they're not. Like, there are some women who are crazy, yeah, but there are also decent ones too. Right. It's just the the problem is the crazy ones are the most vocal. Right. You know, and which is why I try so hard to be vocal. You know, and unfortunately, I I feel like. It shouldn't be this way, but I feel like women have the most credibility when it comes to fighting against feminism because, you know, everyone expects like, oh, you have a vagina, therefore you want to be for feminism. Right. Yeah. The thing is, like, people like me, they don't, they don't really take me seriously. I guess the only thing that will take, they will take seriously is because I'm black. That's pretty much it. But besides that point, like they would just listen to women who actually are women and actually are black women. So that's also a bonus for them. So if right. a person happens to be a woman, they seem to take them much more seriously compared to me. Yeah. And I hate that. I wish that wasn't the case because, you know, let's face it. There are far more um, male YouTubers who, you know, know their shit and I, they, they don't get the you know, recognition they deserve. And I'm not saying the women don't either, but, you know, men are much more likely to do risk-based risk behavior. And even putting yourself out there on the internet and starting a YouTube channel is a risk. Right. You know, you have to put yourself out there and, you know, maybe embarrass the fuck out of yourself. <laughs> right. You get doxxed, <laughs> you know. And so men are more likely to do the YouTube thing. And it just sucks because, you know, they don't get listened to as much as women. And women are too worried about being called fat to make a YouTube channel, you know? Right. Like, when I see people like Karen, when I see people like uh, Rachel Edwards, when I see people like uh, Hannah like basically those kind of people i was actually surprised that they were actually for the first time when i first saw them that they were actually women speaking out against feminism because most of the time i see mostly men who are actually criticize feminism people like sargon of akkad or that guy t or dr random or those kind of people i mostly see men criticizing it so it's kind of rare to see a 
a female criticizing the feminist yep. movement. Yep, it's it is uh, it's it's weird, honestly. Oh, fun fact: uh, me and Hannah actually live in the same city. Really? Yep. I actually spoke to Hannah. She's actually a really nice person too. Oh, she's so sweet and just a wonderful person. But yeah, I've been lucky enough that her and I have gotten together and like gone and had dinner and stuff. So <laughs> it's really cool. And it's like, ah, oh, one of my heroes. It's so cool. <laughs> I, I was, I was totally, you know, I, I was fangirling a little bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. She actually found me on my channel. Like when I was actually speaking out against a feminist, she just commented on my channel. And, like I started talking to her. She's really nice. Oh, she's fantastic. I love the honey badgers. Wait, are you, you know? aren't you a part of the Honey Badgers? Uh, no. No, I kind of was. Um, and uh, there, there was... Okay, fuck it. I'm just going to fucking say what's going on. Um, I'm good with most of the Honey Badgers. I'm good with all of the core Honey Badgers. Um, but when a stupid fucking thing happened months ago and i uh took the wrong side i guess uh during gamergate bullshit and wrote an article about it um someone who is on the periphery of the honey badgers but is on a lot of their streams said they would not be on a stream ever again if i were on it wow so I stepped back or wheeled back, I guess, because um, I have my own channel, you know, and they can come over on my channel, which they have. And I'm good with that. You know, I'm not going to make a big fucking stink about it just because I don't agree with somebody. And I'm not going to name names, but it is not one of the core badgers at all. I'm good with everybody. I'm good with, you know, I'm good with Allison. I'm good with Brian. Um you know, I'm good with Mike. Uh, I actually have never spoken to Karen, but, I, you know, I adore her. And we've talked a little bit in, like, comment sections, but we've never spoken, like, on Skype. But I'm good with Hannah. I'm I'm good with most of the Badgers. I, I Hell, I'm sending Anna Cherry some uh, some panties <laughs> <laughs> right now. So <laughs> I have panties in my shop, and uh, I, I had sent her some... Uh, months ago, and I guess she had an unfortunate laundry incident. She <laughs> wants me to send her some more, and I'm fine with that. But no, I'm good with her, and so I'm good with most everybody. It's just there's this one person that doesn't like me, and yeah, oh well, they can suck it, I guess. Right, like it's kind of something that is inevitable with any kind of group. Like there's just one person in any group that you don't like at all. Yep. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing. I liked this person just fine. I approached them and said, hey, can we agree to disagree and bury the hatchet and be adults? And they responded with, you know, I'm going to be a d an adult and I'm not going to beat around the bush. No, we cannot be okay. I'm like, okay, fine. Right. That's fine. So, yeah. But no, it's not any of the core people or anything like that. It's just someone who's a frequent guest. Mm hmm So, yep. And that's fine. Right. <laughs> Someone said bearing the hatchet. Yeah, bearing's pretty cool, too. Like, um... Bearing's the shit. I love bearing. <laughs> no, it's not Mercedes Carrera. Mercedes is my boo-boo. I love her. It was not a woman. I'll say that. I actually never spoke to Mercedes ever. Oh, she's fantastic. She's super busy right now. I mean, who wouldn't be when you're getting fucked for a living? <laughs> but, right. you know, I mean, but no, she she's kind of my hero. I love her. No, it's not Layman, and it's not Max Durat. Yeah, it's like, I cannot imagine getting a job just screwing people for a living. This. <laughs> you're like, where do I sign up? You, like, you know who has you the energy do? for that, actually, though? Well, think about it. You could do, like, porn parodies of old Richard Pryor movies. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. That's not for me. Like, I cannot do porn. That's just something I would never do. Oh, I, I bet you could. You just don't want I, 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 No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so everyone, hashtag Tyler Preston porno. Let's get this going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Keep giving the wrong ideas for them. Uh, no, these are the exact right ideas. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is terrible. <laughs> It's okay. It's I mean, okay. People, if I had people to... have tried to get me to do porn, so I mean, turnabout's fair play, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the most I would do is probably be a cameraman, but that's it. That's just it. <laughs> so you don't want to be a fluffer? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, just I, I'll, I could be the cameraman, but not a fluffer. All right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but no, uh, people, people have tried to, uh, yeah, get me to do porn, and I'm like, um. Like I, I get it. There's a, uh, you know, there's a market for the cripple fetish thing. Serious? But, oh yeah, yeah. My friend sent me a whole website of cripple porn, and he's like, "You should do this. You need to do this." <laughs> like, like, oh Shannon, you would make so much money. I'm like, yeah, probably, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not the most uh, comfortable with my body. So yeah, no. Nope. Uh, I guess I never heard about that until now. Like uh, I'm not gonna look it up either. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it is like amputees. Oh goodness. Yeah, and uh, but there's this the fair share of like women in wheelchairs and um, midgets. Eesh. Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine is actually like in love with midgets. I don't. Know, I don't get it. <laughs> it was the same friend who uh, got the broken ribs and the same friend who sent me the uh, cripple porn. He's, he's an interesting guy. <laughs> he's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, he used to run my conservative page with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, there you go. Uh, oh, I think someone said I have a cute voice. Well, thank you. Right, like, speaking about my voice, like, there's something, like, people ask me, like, where do I get my voice from? Like, um, as far as my voice is concerned, like, it's basically a speech impediment. Like, when I was younger, I actually had to go to speech classes to actually speak the way I do right now, because when I was younger, I could not really hear it out clearly. And so what happened was that I actually had to have some sort of tubes in my ears, and I had, okay. to, go to, had to go to speech therapy class to actually... Uh, speak properly and so people say like do you have an accent like are you from like outside of the united states it's like no i'm not i'm from here you never sounded like you were from uh, anywhere else to me so. right like it's i don't know like if some people thought like i'm from from outside of the united states so may i ask like what region of the country are you from i'm from the state of maryland Okay, I figured I figured you might be somewhat southern, and no, guys, it was it was not otter fag. Uh, actually, uh, Hannah uh, completely ripped otter fag a new one on Twitter over the shit he did to me. They did not choose him over me. No, but good guess. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna get it. That's okay. Of course they won't. I I, I would rather them not honestly because I don't want to like be the bad guy or anything. So. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of curious. Do you play video games? Yes, yes, I do. Um, it, it depends, though, because a lot of games I cannot physically play myself. Um, my hands, you know, the, the cripple thing isn't just my legs. It's my hands as well. Okay. Um, so, like, I can't feel my hands very well, and so I have to be able to, like, look at my hands. Wow. In order to play. Um so, like, I can never do the VR thing, which I'm a little bummed out. <laughs> I can't do it either because it's just, it covers your entire face and you cannot really, you know, look like a, like, when you play those games, like those horror games, like, you look like a complete fool doing that with the VR. Right, right. Um, survival horror is my favorite genre. Oh, uh, so you like Resident Evil or Silent Hill or both? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, um, like, the best games that have come out in a long time for me uh, is the Outlast series. Hmm. I love that. I love Outlast. I'm really excited for the new one, but I can't play it. So I've I have never to, played like, it find other I have to find other people to play it and uh, for me. And like, I was having Feminist Flow play it and he was streaming it, but I don't know if that's going to continue or not because um, 
we fake broke up because we we were like trolling people that we were together <laughs> and i don't know why but people actually thought we were serious and it's like guys i'm married <laughs> <laughs> like like i don't think people get like okay so it was obviously on youtube and my husband is subscribed to my channel like why would i be like oh yeah we're totally fucking to this guy my husband was in on the joke <laughs> I thought like yeah. feminist fro was actually into like a villain or something. He he's into everybody. <laughs> um, no, I think right now he's actually like really actually um, dating a uh, modern Medusa. <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess they're dating, and so I don't know if we're gonna continue our Outlast series because we broke up. Uh, but you know, it, so I gotta find someone else to like play stuff for me. <laughs> Have you played the uh, the PT demo that came out on the PS? I didn't get to play it, and uh, I didn't download it in time. Oh man, I'm so, just so lucky because I actually have it on my PS4. Yeah, I saw um, you doing your uh, your play of it. When the one you put up last night. Yeah, it, I was actually so afraid. Like when I saw that ghost, it was just so scary. Oh my god, it is. It's so so so. It's like the whole entire house is just so completely dark, and then suddenly you see this this um this woman out of nowhere, like when you don't really expect yeah, just it. standing there and like twitching. Just right. Twitching. And like she's up on her tippy toes, like she looks like she's hanging almost, you know. And like when she comes towards you, like you think she's gonna possess you, but then she just goes through your body. Yeah, just right through you. Hey, yeah. Okay. Mocking moniker says, "I feel sorry for your husband. He has to deal with thousands of men ogling your breasts." Um. Yeah, I I don't think it's really a big deal because he's the only one that gets to touch them. Okay, <laughs> now he's touching them. Thank you, honey. Thanks. Um. Anyway, that was that was awkward. Yeah, that is awkward. Yeah, that was awkward. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like I need to address those things sometimes because, like, people think, like, you know, it's causing issues with my husband or something. It's yeah, not. like, I guess if a person were to have, um, I, I get, and what I was trying to sell, if a person were to have tests, like a person, I guess the husband might be more protective about that, you know? I guess, but, <laughs> you know, we. We've always had the policy. It's like people can look, but you know, only he gets to have, you know. Right. So I don't know, and I I don't know. Like I I think it would be maybe I'm weird, but like if a bunch of people thought my husband was hot, right? I would I think that would be cool because it'd be like yeah, and only I get to have him. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like an ego boost, like yeah, and I got him. <laughs> so I must be pretty hot to have that hot person. I don't know. That's just my way of looking at it. Right. But like what are kind of what are horror games do you play besides uh Outlast? Um God. I okay, so I I know, I know, I know it's awful, but uh I love FNAF, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh just for the lore. Like I know the gameplay isn't that good and you know, it's it's juvenile, and the animatronics are adorable. They're not scary, mm -hmm. you know. But the lore is really, really fascinating to get into. So I like that. Um, Slender was good. Um, Have you uh, played the one called Jeff the Killer? Which one? There's so many Jeff the Killer. Oh, games. goodness. Like, it was like, there was this one version I played where it was like in some sort of factory place and there was like this humongous was it go to go sleep go to sleep go to sleep yeah yeah that one yeah yeah i've seen that one uh because a uh a channel i really like um a gaming channel called harshly critical uh he he like specializes in finding shitty jeff the killer games <laughs> and so i watched all that um oh yeah dead space duh dead space Right, like I actually have it for the the Xbox 360. It's pretty good. Oh, Dead Space is fantastic, and uh... <laughs> have you played the new the new Doom game? 
No, I haven't. Huh? I'm not much for uh, for first person shooters just because I don't really have the um, I don't have the reflexes, you know. Right. Like I cannot imagine like not able to play a game without you know looking at the controller. Like whenever I play a game, like I just don't look at the controller. I just have the eye and uh, finger coordination. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I also liked, so, so, you know, um, Dead Space is great. Uh, I liked Until Dawn, actually. Um, I don't know if you've, uh, seen that one. I haven't. Um, it's kind of in the same vein as, like, the Quantic Dream games, you know, like, um, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, which, Heavy Rain was great, Beyond Two Souls was kind of eh. Um... <laughs> But uh, Until Dawn was really good. It was made by a different developer, but it was in the same kind of style. Right. Um, where, you know, it's a narrative and it's leading you and the choices you make really have an impact on what happens. And um, basically, it starts out being, you know, a typical, like, 80s slasher movie, you know, and you've got all these teenagers in a cabin in the woods in the mountains. And, uh, you know, so you're like, oh, great, I see where this is going. But then halfway through, it completely flips on its head, and it's nothing you were expecting. And uh, it, it, basically, you have the option as the player, because you play as every character at one point. And um, you can basically kill everyone, keep everyone alive, or any mixture in between, based on the choices you make. Wow. And so it's entertaining, it's a lot of fun, and the story is really good. Hmm. And so I recommend it. I really do. Oh, um, people people kind of give it shit, you know, it's a walking simulator or whatever, but, you know, it's really good story, and there's a lot to find. There's lots of exploration as far as, you know... Uh, Finding out the story, you know, the lore and what happened, you know. Right. But anyways, Shannon, I have to go. But thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate it. No problem. Anytime. And uh, everybody go and subscribe to Tyler's channel if you haven't already. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again. I really appreciate it. No problem. Anytime. All right. Uh, this is uh, Liberal Lunacy signing off. So bye, everybody.